Hello everyone. This video will be again about WS2812B RGB LEDs, but uh, this time I am not going to talk about the basics, but instead I will explore the possibilities of connecting more than 60 RGB LEDs. Uh, Y60, this is the ASUS Aura limitation in software, you will see later. Normally you can't connect more than 60 LED, but there is a solution to this issue and I have successfully connected over 100 RGB LEDs on a single strip to the motherboard and I'm going to show you how to do it. As I said, I won't be covering basics of these addressable LEDs, so if you don't know what they are and how they work, I suggest you to watch my previous video about them. You can find it in my videos. And let's start. The solution to this problem, how to connect more addressable LEDs on a single strip originates from NZXT subreddit where one user found out that their AR fans use addressable LEDs and it's possible to connect them directly to ASUS motherboard but they found also the limit and at the same time how to bypass it First things first, as you can see I have two strips connected to my motherboard right now. On the right side you will see a standard 50-50 RGB 12 volt strip. And on the left side you see my uh, addressable strip, the long one. Right now there are only 10 LEDs lit up on it. And let's see how it looks in the ASUS Aura software. There is the setting tab where you put in number of LEDs on your strip. Let's change it to something higher than 10. After that we have to confirm and it takes some time to process this information. Okay, and now let's look what just happened. We have more RGB LEDs connected in a single strip than we selected in ASUS Aura. This caused all the LEDs to light up, but as soon as we change the effect to something like rainbow, it resets back to the number we put in the settings. So right now is 30. So it doesn't remember the setting. It will come back to this default value. Let's change it again to the maximum we are allowed to put in there, which is 60. Again, we are confirming change and it's processing the information. And once again, the whole strip lit up, but as soon as we change the effects to something dynamic like uh, rainbow or the shooting star, it will reset back to the number we put in there. And right now you can see that I'm trying to put a higher number than 60. It simply won't let me. I put it 9 and I want to put 90, but it won't accept my number. The maximum default in ASUS Aura is 60. And we don't like it. We don't like being limited. And now I'm going to show you how to increase that default number. 
So, first thing we need to do is to completely shut down the ASUS Aura services. We shut down ASUS Aura itself and then we look specifically for something called light service, light control service. And it's right here. Let me find it. Yes, this is it. We shut it down. Next thing, we navigate to C program files lighting service. And inside, we have a file called last profile XML, which basically stores our, all our Aura settings. Inside this file, when we open it with a notepad, there is a line called addressable strip led count. In there we put our custom value. For me it's 132 because that's how many LEDs I have on my strip. We save the file. It's on C so sometimes we need administrative privileges. While service is restarting the LEDs will briefly turn off and will turn on again all of them just like before but there is a difference as you can see in our settings we can see our custom value 132 or whatever you put in there and this time it's all working again all the LEDs are lit up no matter what configuration we pick it's staying just like we configure it without resetting to any lower value. Basically, it works. You can bypass the ASUS Aura limitation of 60 addressable LEDs and change it to higher value. Okay, but everyone obviously can see that at the very end of strip, some of the LEDs are not working still despite setting correct value in ASUS Aura setting. I wonder the same why it's happening. At first I thought this is a voltage drop issue because these LEDs are eating up a lot of current and just the strip resistance is reducing the voltage from 5 volts to 4.5. I made a special voltage bypass and it wasn't the issue so after that I carefully counted the LEDs and found out that the last LED that works is exactly 128 LED and this leads to a conclusion that probably there is a second hardware or software or more precisely a firmware limitation. If you are familiar with programming, you know that 8-bit uh, signed integer data type can store values from minus 128 to plus 127. So, if in ASUS Aura microcontroller control unit the first LED is a number 0, and the last LED is 127, we get total of 128 LEDs and that's exactly how many lights up in here. Again, I hope that ASUS will correct this issue in next update because it's really irritating. And this is a close-up of strip, it's 30 LEDs per meter. And next will be high density, 72 leds per meter. If you remember from previous video, each led takes 60 milliamperes of current. If you multiply it by number of leds, it gives really high current and because of that we must connect them directly to your PSU because motherboard will not keep up. And to do this we use this kind of power splitter. This schematic is pretty much self-explanatory. 
all you do is cut the power from Modi board and replace it with power from PSU. If you are having a hard time finding correct plugs, they are called GST SM 3 pin. Also, it was very nice to use a special aluminum profiles to mount your strips inside case. They come with colors, usually clean, frosty and milky. They not only protect strips from dust, but also make the light dissipate better. The colors mix better. You probably don't see it on video, but on right hand side I have a milky cover on the strip. On the left side there is frosty cover. I personally prefer the milky one because it tones down the brightness of LED which is already pretty high. Also with frosty cover you can still see through it and see the LED strip itself and with milky one the light gets nice shape and you can't see the strip at all, it's fully covered. And the last thing I want to show you is how to somehow bypass the limitation of one header on the motherboard. You can connect your strips in parallel, so they both are in sync. To do that you need to create a simple signal splitter like this with one input and multiple outputs. And here we have a schematic. It's even more simple than the previous one. You just connect each input to the each output. You can do two outputs, you can do three outputs, but remember about the current limitation. You can always first use the splitter to power them from PSU and then use the second splitter. This is how I, I do it. The power splitter comes first, then the signal splitter. After that I connect first addressable LED strip and then I simply connect the second and you can already see the results as I clean up my desk. Both strips receive exactly same control signal which makes them work exactly the same they are fully synchronized together. Maybe it's not as fancy as having multiple light zones, but it still can give you a very nice symmetrical effect of light in your case when you put one strip at the bottom and other at the top and they are all synchronized and let's remember that still you can take end of the one strip or the other and connect to it one more strip in series so one strip can have for say 30 LEDs, the other can have 60. It's all customizable. Okay, to sum up, you can use more than 60 addressable LEDs with ASUS Aura with second hardware limitation at 128. You can power these strips directly from PSU using the right connector. And you can also connect them in parallel instead of regular serial connection. So you can connect more strips at the same time without messy rotting. And that would be all for today. 
If you found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. And see you around.